Welcome back to another person word study. We're going to be in the book of Samuel, 1st and 2nd Samuel. So if you want to turn to 1st Samuel 9, chapter 9 is the chapter, verse 1. So, now there was a now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Probably butchered some of those names. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was none, not among the children of Israel a goodlier person, there's the word person, than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Now you go back to person. What's it talking about? Well, if you read a little bit before, it says, Children of Israel, a goodlier person. So person here is a reference to Saul being the goodlier person in a sense that he's the goodlier person. But it's also a reference, if you look into it, all of the children of Israel. There's no person like Saul. So it's still a reference to somebody, even if you say it's a reference to all of Israel, Still, the people of Israel have a body, soul, and spirit. If it's a reference to Saul, Saul has a body, soul, and spirit. Now, I want to get through one of the verses to remind you that the whole point of this study is to prove that person, the only person of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. There is no God in three persons. The Trinity is false. There's only one person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. He has a body, Jesus Christ. A soul, God the Father, and a spirit, the Holy Spirit. He's the only one. So that's why we're doing these studies. Next time a person is mentioned, 1 Samuel 9.19. So, we're going to go from 19 to 22. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me into the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Now remember the story about Saul. Saul went looking for uh, his father's asses. Uh, today he's also known as donkeys. And they couldn't find him, so the servant said, Here, I got a coin, let's go look for the seer. So he runs into Samuel. Verse 20, And as thy, for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee, and on all thy father's house? And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite, of the smallest of the tribe of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou to me? Remember how God uses the, the weak over the strong and the meek? 22. And Samuel took Saul and his servants and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place, among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. So what's the persons referring to there? Them that were bidden. So there was thirty total people there, and what does a each one of those people have that were bidden a body, a soul, and a spirit. So that's why it says persons plural, because there was 30 persons, each person that was there. Body, soul, and spirit. So we see, once again, in order to be considered a person, you have to have a body, you have to have a soul, and you have to be referred to someone who's living. You have a spirit. Without the spirit, you're not alive. That's why in the Old Testament they'd say, yield up the ghost. They yielded up the ghost. The Spirit left them. That meant they died. So, next time that this person is mentioned is 1 Samuel 6, chapter 16, verse 14. And we're going to read all the way down to 18. So starting at 14, we're going to read down to 18. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Notice how 
Spirit of the Lord, capital S, capital L, and then evil spirit, lowercase s. Okay? And the reason I point that out is our God is greater than the lowercase g God of this world. Always will be, always has been, always will be. Um, 15. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning player on the harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hands, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, prudent in matters, and a calmly person, and the Lord is with him. Calmly person. I look up the definition of calmly, properly, becoming, suitable. Okay. In other words, they're saying he was He's proper in how he acts, but he's also suitable for the task. So the person here is a reference to the son of Jesse, which is King David. Well, wasn't king at this time, but David. So person is reference to someone who has a body, soul, and a spirit. Now, uh, I just had to look up calmly because sometimes you come across a verse and it's like proper, becoming, suitable. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22. Let's go to chapter 22. Chapter 22, we're going to go from 12 to verse 18. Okay, let's stop at the start at the top. And Saul said, Hear now thy son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here am I, my my Lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as, a, as at this day? Now, if you read the story, King David was, uh, not King David, David at the time, whose future would become king. He's fleeing from Saul, and he comes to this place, and he asks him if he had any weapons, and all the weapon they had, they had the sword of Goliath that King David used to cut his head off. And they had bread there, the showbread, and David took that and he ate it. So this is Saul finding out that King David went there, and the, the priest there helped him out. Verse 14. Then Abimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? In other words, he's saying, How are we supposed to know? You know, he's he's your man. And we're, I guess word hasn't got back to him, and as far as they're concerned, David's a good man. He's not turned against Saul. He's not Saul's enemy. 15. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my fathers, our father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this less or more. Like I said, they didn't know. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all the fathers, thy father's house. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled, and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Lord. They feared God. And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. Okay. Four score, score is 20. So that's four times two, 80. Uh, 85 people were killed. Okay. And they were at the house of, they were the priests. Okay. And a priest is a person that has a body, soul, and spirit. So when it says 85 people were killed by Doeg, uh, persons, plural, 
It's talking about somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So, let's keep going because there's another word, person. So, so far, person has never been a reference to a body by itself with no soul or spirit, a soul by itself with no body or spirit, or a spirit by itself with no body or soul. Okay, it's got to have all three to be considered a person. So at 19, we're going to read down to 23. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword both men and women, children and suckling and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Hemelech, the son of Hetub, named Abithar, escaped and fled after David. And Abithar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said unto Abithar, uh, Abiathar, if I pronounce that, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite, remember he was the one that Saul commanded to kill him, was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have, occas I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me should, with me thou shalt be in safeguard. So when it's talking about in verse 22, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Whose person is referring to? Well, if we read earlier, all the priests that Doeg slew. So once again, persons, it's plural here, is referring to the 85 people that were killed. Body, soul, and spirit. You can't get away from that. First Samuel 25, chapter 25, verse 32. And yep, the last time person used in First Samuel. First Samuel 25, 32. Let's get over to 26. 2532. And we were reading down to verse 36. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. Now, you read the story as we get down here, we'll read about it. Nabal, uh, King David and his men kept his shepherds safe, so he sent someone to Nabal saying, We need food and provisions. And Nabal turned him down. So King David said, okay, he gets his men and they're going to go wipe Nabal out for mistreating him, disrespecting King David, or David. I'm going to keep saying King David because we're used to this saying King David. Um, and his wife, Abigail, hears about it, so she grabs all this food and provisions and goes out and meets David as he's coming to destroy him. Verse 33 and blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by this morning light any that pisseth against the wall. In other words, men. He was going to kill all the men. Uh, men, all the males. Verse 35, So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house, see I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of, king, of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken, wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Okay? I have accepted thy person. Basically, he hearkened, as you heard, to Abigail's voice when she was saying, please don't kill us. Don't wipe the men out. Here's the, what you asked for. And he also accepted her. Okay? But person there, accepted thy person, is a reference to Abigail. Someone who has a body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Uh, a human being considered with respect. So when he says he accepted her, he respected her. But it still had to be someone that had a body, soul, and spirit. Now, 
We're going to move to 2 Samuel chapter 4. I like the book of Samuel. It's a good read, both 1 and 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 5. We're going to read a ways. We're going to be reading all the way down to 12. So we're going to start at verse 5. And the sons of Rimon, Rimon, the Barathite, Rechab, and Bana, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishabosheth, I'm trying these, who lay on a bed at noon. And they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat, and they smote him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Benani, his brother, escaped. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got them away from the plain all night. Okay. you got to read the story a little bit more. Um, but bottom line, they're killing... Uh, let's get the name. I have a hard time reading it. We'll keep reading it, will mention it again. And they brought the head of Ishaboth, right there if I mentioned it, unto David to Hebron, saying, Look, we killed one of your enemies. And said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishaboth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life, and the Lord hath avenged my, my lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. Okay. Now, as we read, we're going to find out David wasn't for it. But they thought they were doing a great service for King David by killing one of Saul's sons. And David answered Rechab and Benani, his brother, the sons of Rehamon, the Barathite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought him, I'm sorry, Thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him and Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed, shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they slew him, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool of Hebron. But they took the head of Ishaboeth and buried it in the sepulchre of Abner and Hebron. Now, verse 11. How much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person? Who is righteous person referring to? Ishaboeth the son of Saul. In other words, um, King, Dave, King David uh, basically saying the man was innocent. Okay, why would you kill him? Why would you be cowardly and sneak into his bed while he's sleeping and kill him? So person here is a reference to Saul's son, Ishaboleth, Bosheth, if I'm pronouncing it right, probably not. So, person there is a reference to a man that has a body, soul, and spirit. 2 Samuel 14, 14. King David had a lot of reference for God, and that's why he wouldn't kill Saul. He feared God, and he loved God. And he said, Saul is his chosen vessel. He's the, God chose him. I'm not going to kill him. Okay. So someone came to him, if you remember that story, came to him and said, Hey, Saul's dead. I've killed him Like when Saul was hurt. And Saul told him, uh, Kill me with your sword. And the man didn't fear to do it. He just did it. Went to King David and said, Look what I've done. And thinking he'd get a reward. He didn't. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 14. Interesting. Okay, verse 14, 14. For we must need die and are as water split on the ground which cannot be gathered up again neither doth God respect any person yet doth he devise means that his, that his banished be not expelled from him 
Okay, if you read the chapter, a woman is dis disguising herself to get the king to bring Absalom, his son, back. Okay. But notice here it says, God is not, neither doth God respect any person. Okay. Someone has a body, soul, and spirit. Just because someone's rich, he doesn't hold him higher and respect him more than someone that's poor. He doesn't respect someone who's mighty strength-wise, physical strength-wise, versus someone who's weak. Okay. He's not a respecter of persons. That's what that's saying there. So he's not going to respect a man or woman or a child that over another because they're rich, like we said, because they're rich. But they have a body, soul, and spirit. You jump down to 21, verse 21. And the king said unto Joab, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore and bring the young man Absalom again. So that just proves that it's talking about Absalom. Or that God's not a respecter of persons. She's trying to get Absalom, the king, to bring Absalom back. Because he was in exile. So, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 6. And we're going to read all the way down to 11. All the way down to 11. And when Hush... Gosh, I'm going to start bushing these again. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahith Ophel hath spoken after this manner, shall we do after his sayings, if not speak thou? Okay. If you remember this story, um, King David's being punished, Absalom tries to make himself king, and the elders are telling him, you need to do this. And then the younger saying, because he, he sought the counsel of the younger men, like his fellow peers, and say, what I, should I do? And that's where we're at right now. Let's see, start over at 6. And when Hashai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken after this manner, shall we do after his saying, if not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. He, he gave the good one, the right way to do it, but he, he's not going to listen to the elders, he's going to listen to the younger. And today, you see that a lot. The younger are being raised by younger men, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're peers, they're fellow peers, people they think are cool and everything, and they're not following the elderly. Verse 8, For said Hushai, Thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field, and thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place, and it will come to pass, when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Now here's his counsel. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. He's saying you need to be there too, leading the charge. But who's on thy own person talking about here? Absalom. What does Absalom have? He has a body, he has a soul, and he's living. At least for now, he's living. So they're giving him false, ad bad advice, basically. And he doesn't listen to the elders, the good advice. He uh, follows the younger, his fellow peers, and he follows their advice. And if you read on, you'll find out what happens. Absalom loses, and he loses his life. So person there is a reference to someone who has a body, soul, and spirit. First and second Samuel is down. Remember, brothers and sisters of Christ, all these studies, and I keep mentioning them in each study, words have meaning. Okay? It's so important. My wife and I, when we do our daily devotions, we'll come across words that we're like, what does that word mean? And we'll look up the word. 
okay? You don't just go past a word and say, well, it might mean this, or it's not that big of a deal to know what it means. Words have meaning. You should never, if you're using that in your vocabulary, God and three persons, you need to be taking it out, okay? Because I know that a lot of you brothers and sisters out there, that even the ones that are standing for the Trinity, um, they don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit, but that's what they're saying when they say God, God in three persons. They don't believe that the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. Yet, they use a word that says otherwise. Okay? So I'm imploring the people that believe in the Godhead of the Bible that are still using Trinity terms to turn from that, repent, and say, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't know, but a lot of you do now, and say, Lord, I'm just going to use Godhead. And the only person I'm going to, the only person, only Jesus is the person of the Godhead, and that's the only, only Jesus am I going to call a person. Okay? Four times in the Bible, Jesus is referred to as a person. He's the only one. God the Father is never referred to as a person, and the Holy Spirit's never referred to a person. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, stand for the King James Bible, stand for absolute truth. Take person out of your vocabulary when referring to the Father, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. I will see you in the next books that we go over with the word study on person.